anybody, I don't know, uh, share with me what you have going on. What are you cooking? Are you going to go out to eat? Are you ordering um, food to bring home? What are you guys doing? So, I am making Mexican chicken lasagna, which is a family favorite, and I make it a lot. And if you have um, been to any of my actual cooking parties, you've probably had it because I do like to make it at my cooking parties as well. It's just a great recipe. It shows a great variety of products. And it's also um, just a super easy recipe that I think everybody needs to know how to make. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this recipe. The first thing I need are some chopped onions. So I'm gonna be using my manual food processor. Love this product. I have just one small onion. Now, if you know my family, I put onions in everything. There's not one dish that we don't eat onions with. What I love about the manual food processor is the blade comes out and these go in your dishwasher. It does come with a lid if you wanted to store it. Um, you can make hummus in here. You can chop just about anything except for baby carrots. Baby carrots don't work. So the way this latches is or works is you unlatch it. You hold it with your one hand and you pump with the other. And you can do it left-handed as well. You just rotate it so you hold it with the other hand. All right, so the first pump is always the hard pump. And then you can't be all dainty and wimpy. You gotta put a little umph into it. And look at that. Look, our onions are all chopped up nice and small. Now, if you have little kids um, at home and they dislike onions, then you can chop them even smaller. So um, we like onions, but I'm gonna show you just how small you can get them. So this is our little mini mix and scraper, which is just the right size for inside here. So just top them even smaller for anyone that's kidding. And then that's it. So now the lid does need to be hand washed and should not be submerged under water. So let me just show you how small I got these onions. Now, I like using this versus uh, an electric um, processor because when you use an electric processor, sometimes it turns your onions to mush. Nobody really wants mush, but um, look at the onions, super nice and small. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for right now. And then the next thing I need to do is grate the cheese. So I already have some cheese grated, so that we could save some time. This is our classic batter bowl, been around forever. It's one block of softened cream cheese. And you just need eight ounce block of Monterey Jack cheese. Now I have done this recipe with cheddar cheese. I have done this recipe for um, lots of different cheeses, but today we're using Monterey Jack. All right, on the food chopper instead. The food chopper is a great product. We have had the food chopper around forever. The difference with the food chopper is you chop only in this little area on your cutting board. Then you have little piles of um, whatever it is you chopped, whereas this is all right here in the bowl it's quicker as well so i highly recommend the manual food processor over the food chopper now the food chopper is still great for doing nuts and for doing um carrots and if i'm doing a jalapeno i will just put the jalapeno in here and chop it all up and that way you know it works good for that kind of thing but for onions and peppers and celery making um, guacamole i make it in the manual food processor as well all right, so now if you know me, you know I never buy pre-grated cheese. I always buy my cheese in the block form. This is our adjustable coarse grater right here. So it comes like this and you just open it. You can do it that way or I like to do it like this. This is the coarse grater. You can see um, it's got a bigger grate and we also have a fine grater. So if you don't know why I don't buy grated cheese, it's because in those pre-packaged graters, um, pre-packaged grated cheese, there's a lot of other things in there besides just cheese. You get cellulose, you get potato starch, all of that kind of, you know, doesn't make your cheese taste that good and it doesn't melt and get that ooey gooeyness. So, um, the food chopper for onions and garlic, yes, it's great for uh, garlic as well, yes, for the food chopper. All right, I'm gonna grate this cheese, finish grating it. 
Like I said, this is the Monterey Jack. You can use whatever. I've used Pepper Jack, pretty much whatever cheese I have I'm, I'm using. We're not picky around here. All right. So now I'm going to put half of it in with my cream cheese. And I'm going to save the rest to go on the top. So I'll just put it aside and we're just going to stir all that together but I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper so this is our salt and pepper grinder set which I think is just a beautiful set and we do sell the salt and the pepper I'm going to put quite a few um, turns of the pepper we like pepper a little bit of salt and then I'm just going to mix all of this together and add a little bit of cilantro. So, I don't know about you, but I don't have really good cutting skills. So we have this great little tool right here. It's called a, a herb mill. It's hard to say sometimes. My mouth gets twisted. An herb mill. So the way this works is you just put your cilantro, your parsley, um, I've used basil, whatever fresh herb in here. There's a, a marble inside there, a ball. It has these little teeth, and you turn this, and it comes out like confetti. You gotta shake it to get the ball on top of it. Once you get going, can you see how it's coming out like confetti? So we're gonna put, uh, it was just like a big old handful of cilantro, and I'm gonna put, use a little bit to go on the top. So all you do is just keep shaking, and then that ball feeds it through the little teeth. All right, so we're gonna set this aside, and that's gonna go on the top as well. Let me finish stirring this around. Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you're joining me. Please let me know if you're tuning in from one of my virtual parties. Let me know whose party you're watching me from so you can get awarded the tickets. And if you're just watching, just say hey. Let me know you're there. All right, so we're just going to set that aside. And then we're going to move on to the chicken. So I cooked my chicken. Let me get my oven mitts on. They're kind of hot. These are our new oven mitts, our new pretty color. It's the gray that's really popular. So I cooked some chicken tenders and I cooked them in my double burner grill pan. The recipe calls for three cups of cooked chicken. So however, whatever you wanna do to come up with the chicken. We just like the flavor of the grilled chicken on the grill pan. And I used our um, Southwestern seasoning. So for those that are new to Pampered Chef, we have a whole line of different uh, seasonings and rubs. Southwestern is an old one, but it's a favorite. Everybody loves our Southwestern. So I just seasoned it with a little Southwestern, a little salt, and a little pepper. And now I just need to chop up those chicken tenders. So I'm just going to grab them and put them in my bowl real fast. So that didn't take long to cook the chicken tenders at all. They cook really fast. In the, on the double burner grill pan. What I like about our new cookware is it's dishwasher safe. Not that I would ever put that in my dishwasher, but it is dishwasher safe. All right, these here are our chef tongs. These are great because they'll stay closed. To open, you just point down, squeeze, they open. To close, you point up and they'll stay closed. So they won't open up wide in your drawer and take up space. Now to chop up the chicken, I'm using salad choppers. I don't know why we don't call these chicken choppers, but you just, see if you can see what I'm doing. You just kind of snip at it like this, and it'll chop up your chicken for you. So whenever a recipe calls for um, chopped chicken, uh, this is how I do it. Even if I am cheating and I'm buying a rotisserie chicken, see how it chops it up? Even if I buy a rotisserie chicken for a recipe, like chicken pot pie, sometimes I cheat and I buy a rotisserie chicken, then I'll just use the salad choppers to chop it up. So, Sophie, I see you there. Please let me know that you're watching from Susan's party so you get the ticket points. All right, that's the rest of the chicken. Let me get these chopped up. If anybody has these salad choppers, uh, comment below. Let me know that you have them already. These, I think, are just one of our best inventions. Obviously, they're called salad choppers because you can chop salad with them. Um, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I am chopping my chicken or if I'm doing a pulled pork in my slow cooker, I actually just chop it right there in the slow cooker. 
So these are so nice and convenient. It's so much easier than trying to cut it up. It gets it nice and small, however you want it. Look, look, that was all those chicken tenders. That was a lot, actually. I have more than three cups, just FYI. <laughs> there you go, see, that was quick and easy. The recipe calls for three cups of chicken. That is obviously um, over three cups, but since I have hearty eaters, it's all good. Now, I like to add the onions to my chicken and just stir it all around. Okay. And now, next thing we need is the recipe calls for 28 ounces of enchilada sauce. So that's that great big can of enchilada sauce. My husband does not actually like the red enchilada sauce, so I am using green enchilada sauce. This recipe, I don't think it really matters what kind of enchilada sauce you're using, but the green tastes good. Um, my husband prefers it. The recipe does call for the red. All right, so for those that do not have our smooth edge can opener, it's super easy to use. I tell people, don't think about it. If you think about it, and you're looking and you're trying to figure out how to get it on, it's more complicated. All I tell people to do is put the can in front of you, butt it up to the, butt the can opener up to the can, turn, and it'll automatically attach. All right, so now we're just gonna go around. Hey y'all, please let me know um, if you're watching me from a virtual party that I'm doing this week. Comment with the host name so I know. And if you're just watching me, let me know you're here. Say hi comment. Please share too. I would love it if you would share. So now to get it off, sometimes you'll feel a loosening in the tension. Sometimes you'll hear a little pop, but to get it off, you go the opposite direction and it will take it off. And now you have to use what I refer to as the birdie beaks right there. And uh, you just lift it up. And now you have a smooth edge on your, your lid and a smooth lid, uh, um, smooth on your ridge here. Sorry, I can't talk. I'm just gonna dump that in my large stainless steel bowl. Actually, this is the medium size. It looks like the large because it's kind of big, but it's just the medium. I'm gonna pour a little bit in the bottom of my baker. So this recipe is going to be done in our beautiful deep cover baker. This product has been around with Pampered Chef forever. You might have gotten it in the cranberry color that we carried for so many years. This is our beautiful new gray, it's called Graystone. Um, and I just put a little bit of that enchilada sauce on the bottom there. Gonna open the other can real fast. So we switched to gray, the stoneware to gray. Um, gosh, I don't even know, four years ago maybe to keep up you know I've been doing Pampered Chef for 15 years it's hard to keep up with when things came out how long we've had things all right so I'm gonna add that to the medium size stainless steel bowl the stainless steel bowls by the way do come in three different um, sizes they nest together all right next step we're almost done with this chicken Mexican lasagna it's so quick and easy we need four corn tortillas not flour corn Flour gets gummy, and we're just gonna dump them inside the enchilada sauce. One, two, three, and four. This recipe can also be done in our Rock Crock Dutch oven. So if you have the Rock Crock Dutch oven, you can do this recipe in there as well. Um, so all I like to do is use my chef tongs, dip it in the enchilada sauce, and then you're just gonna put it on the bottom of your baker, and it's perfectly fine for them to overlap. All right, we'll add those. And now just like a regular lasagna, you're just going to layer, so it's that easy. So I'm gonna do a layer of the chicken. This is the chopped chicken with um, the onions. I mix the onions in with it. Okay, and it's supposed to be, like I said, three cups. I have more than three cups. All right, so that's that. The next layer is gonna be our cheese layer, and I'm just gonna grab one of our small scoops. It's the large. We have three scoops, people. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use the small scoop. This one's great for doing mini muffins. And I'm just going to take the cheese mixture 
And for a lap of a better word, I'm just going to plop it on the top. I don't have any fancy cooking words. I'm just a mom cooking, selling my Pamper Chef products. So for me, we're just plopping it on. So what you guys having for dinner? Let me know. I always need ideas. What about y'all? Do y'all need ideas? I'm always needing ideas. If you're just now joining me, let me know you're here. All right, so we want about half, whoop, don't wanna lose that piece of cheesy goodness. So we want about half of the cheese on top of here. And then we're gonna start our next um, layer of corn tortillas. You know you're live uh, on Facebook when the phone rings in the middle of your presentation. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add the last, or another layer of four corn tortillas to my enchilada sauce. And then just put that on top. Okay, let me grab these. Okay, so make sure you get it coated in the enchilada sauce. Again, I'm just gonna repeat that. Uh, it's supposed to be red, but we're using green. Okay. And then we're just gonna repeat with the chicken. So this is the last layer of the chicken, so we'll just Put the rest of that on top. Okay, okay, there we go. So now, to change this up a, lot, a little bit, I make this a lot at home. So to change it up, uh, I have added some corn to it. I've or added black beans to it. So you can like change the recipe by adding different things to it. So that's always great. Uh, tacos, and mom's taco dip, ooh, and margaritas. I'm gonna make margaritas for the first time in just a little bit too. <laughs> that's usually my son's job, but my son got married and left the house. So now nobody will make margaritas for me. So I got his recipe, which I'll share with you in just a second. All right, now we're gonna plop on the rest of this cheese mixture. We'll just use it all up. So just pull up it on there. There's no need to spread it out because it's gonna cook. So it's gonna like just melt, you know? So why try to spread it out? So this I am putting in the microwave and I'm gonna microwave it, not yet. I'm gonna wait and microwave it when my husband's ready for dinner. But I'm gonna microwave it for about eight to 10 minutes. That's it, eight to 10 minutes in the microwave. Now, if you don't like to use the microwave and you prefer to use your oven, you can just put it on 350 for about 25 minutes until everything is heated all the way through. Completely up to you. I do a lot in the microwave. I cook probably far too much in the microwave, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let me make sure to get all the cheese out that we don't wanna waste it. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. And we need our last layer of corn tortillas. So the last four. One, two, three, four. We'll dump that in our enchilada sauce. Make sure it's coated. All right. So how is everybody working? Are y'all laid off? Are you teachers? Are you working? What's the story, people? Do you know I have not left my house? I still do um, online grocery orders. I did venture out to go to the post office there recently. <laughs> I went to the Huffman post office because I knew it would be quieter. All right, now all we do is add the rest of our enchilada sauce to the top of this. Then we're gonna grab the rest of our grated cheese that we had. And we'll just put that on the top. So this is why I like to use real cheese because this is gonna get nice and ooey gooey versus the pre-grated cheese that you know doesn't really melt and get as ooey gooey. All right, and then the final thing I'm gonna add is just the last few little bits of the cilantro. All right. I'll show you how to take it apart too. Oops. All right, there we go. So the way this comes apart and the way I clean it is that comes off. This comes off like this. This goes in your um, dishwasher or I actually wash it uh, by hand. And I use our little, um, it's called a dual edge cleaning brush. Kinda looks a little bit like a toothbrush. 
right? All right, so I like to clean it with that so I can get in all the little nooks and crannies. I also like to clean the um, salad choppers, the choppers I use for the chicken. I like to use that with that brush as well. Um, oops. So that's our dinner. So I'm gonna pop that in the microwave a little bit for uh, eight to 10 minutes and that will be done. All right, next I wanna show you my son's margarita recipe. So let me go and grab all of the ingredients for that. I have them right here. And I'm gonna show you our bar set. Our, it's called a premium cocktail set. I'll show you that. And we're gonna, I'm gonna make my very first margarita ever. Live in front of you guys. What do you think of that? I was planning on maybe um, stopping and then starting, but I might as well just keep on going. I'll just wash my hands. Get... Okay, so we carry a premium cocktail set. Uh, if you are in one of my virtual parties, I'm going to post about this later on tonight so that you can see it, um, the picture of it. But it comes with um, the shaker. It comes with whatever this is called. <laughs> Don't really know. It comes with a jigger. It comes with a muddler so that if you were making a mojito, you could use it for the mojito. And it comes with this uh, cool stir. So that is what is in. Oh, and then a recipe card, which I lost my recipe card. The recipe cards to uh, make a lot of different cocktails. So this is my son's recipe. And my son is the one that always would make my margaritas. Um, and he has since gotten married, moved out, and now he's not here to make them for me. So I'm going to add the ice to my shaker here. Let me know if you like frozen margaritas or on the rocks. We're making on the rocks today. I need um, two ounces of tequila. So I'm going to use my little... Don't look at my tequila, y'all. This was like in the my little bar area. Who knows like what it is? It looks like it was probably a gift from somebody. All right, so um, adding my tequila. I need uh, my simple sugar. So earlier today I made some simple sugar. For those that don't know what that is, that's equal parts sugar and water. You boil it. So, up oh, we have a frozen there. I personally, um, I like them this way on the rocks. So the simple sugar you boil, sugar, water, until it's dissolved, and then I just put it in um, the refrigerator. I need um, a half an ounce of that. So I have this in my um, Easy Read measuring cup. And then I'm just gonna put this in a something to keep it in the refrigerator so I have it for next time. So we'll add that. I need three-fourths of an ounce of triple sec. Let me see if I can pour that in there. There we go. And then I need the juice of a lime. I need about an ounce. So one lime pretty much gives you uh, one ounce. So have you guys seen our citrus press? I mean, love this, right? So let me show you how great it works. You just put your lemon or your lime cut side down, and then you press, and hopefully you can see how much juice will come out of this half of a lemon, or lime. See? What I love about it is it turns it inside out. So I know my hands do not have the strength to squeeze my lemon or my lime that much to get all that good juice out. All right, yeah, that, that was probably a good ounce. He was right, one lime is about an ounce. All right, now what I do is I put this on top and we shake. I feel a little bit like, um, wait, what's his name? Tom Cruise and Cocktail. Ooh, I'm dating myself, that's an old, 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 old movie. All right, we're just gonna shake this all up. Let me grab my glass. There we go. 
So I used to have margarita glasses, but I got rid of them. <laughs> Sometimes I go through this house cleaning phase where I just get rid of stuff, and I got rid of them. I'm just gonna add the ice and then put that on there, whatever that thing was called, and pour. Ooh. Sure smells like a good margarita. Let me taste it. Oh, who needs my son anyway? I got it right here. I can make my own margaritas now. I'm a happy camper. Oh, salt or no salt? I do not like salt. Mm -mm. At restaurants even, I don't like salt on my uh, glass either. Mm -mm -mm. All right, everybody. So, thank you so much for watching me. I'm going to wait. My husband doesn't get home from work until um, 7 o'clock. And then I'll pop my chicken Mexican lasagna in the microwave. And I'll make him a margarita. And we'll be celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Y'all, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great evening. Um, I hope you uh, will make this recipe at home. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know. I would love to be able to answer them for you. Bye, y'all.